A major shock just rippled through the global AI hardware market, and NVIDIA shareholders immediately felt the impact. On April 28, 2025, NVIDIA's stock slid more than 2% after reports revealed that Huawei had begun testing a new artificial intelligence processor, known as the Ascend 9210D. This was not a routine product update. It marked China's boldest attempt so far to challenge Silicon Valley's dominance over AI computing infrastructure. Behind the headlines lies a development that goes far beyond speculation. Huawei has reportedly invited multiple Chinese technology firms to evaluate the Ascend 9-1D, asserting that the processor can outperform NVIDIA's H100, the chip currently powering everything from large language models to the most advanced AI data centers on the planet. While such claims often invite skepticism, the surrounding context makes this moment far more serious. At the same time as testing the 9-10D, Huawei is rapidly expanding shipments of its earlier Ascend 910B and 9210C processors. The company plans to deliver more than 800,000 units to customers that include ByteDance, the owner of TikTok, as well as several state-controlled Chinese telecom operators. The timing could not be worse for NVIDIA. Just weeks earlier, the US government moved to block exports of NVIDIA's H20 chips to China, products specifically engineered to comply with earlier sanctions. NVIDIA later disclosed that this policy shift would result in an immediate $5.5 billion financial hit. Analysts at JP Morgan warned that the total revenue impact in 2025 alone could climb as high as $16 billion. For context, China accounted for approximately $17 billion, or 13%, of NVIDIA's fiscal 2025 revenue, down sharply from 26% just three years earlier. Some industry observers believe the true exposure is significantly higher once indirect and gray market shipments are factored in. What makes Huawei's progress especially striking is how these chips are being produced. NVIDIA's H100 is manufactured using TSMC's advanced 4 nanometer process and relies on state-of-the-art EUV lithography equipment. Huawei's Ascend processors, by contrast, are built by SMIC using a 7 nanometer process dependent on older deep ultraviolet technology. In theory, this technological gap should make competition impossible. Yet SMIC is attempting to close that gap through sheer engineering intensity. While EUV systems can create 7 nanometer circuits in fewer than 10 steps, SMIC's approach requires more than 30. Each layer is exposed multiple times with extreme precision, using a method known as quadruple patterning. One engineer compared the process to recreating a masterpiece with tools never designed for such detail. The cost of this approach is immense. Producing 7 nanometer chips at SMIC is estimated to be 40 to 50% more expensive than comparable production at TSMC. Yield rates further highlight the challenge. TSMC routinely achieves yields exceeding 90% at advanced nodes, while SMIC's 7 nanometer yields remain in the 60 to 70% range. Experimental 5 nanometer runs have reportedly seen yields as low as 30% meaning most chips produced are unusable. Under normal market logic, this would be unsustainable. But China is not operating under conventional market constraints. Semiconductor self-sufficiency has become a national priority under President Xi Jinping, who has repeatedly emphasized the need to master foundational technologies such as advanced chips and core software. Since 2014, China has invested more than $150 billion into semiconductor development, with an additional $300 billion pledged through 2030. Government support has been decisive. In 2024, subsidies accounted for nearly 87% of SMIC's operating profit. Without state backing, the company's margins would have been razor thin. Alongside financial support, China has mobilized human capital on an unprecedented scale. From 2020 to 2024, more than 3,500 semiconductor engineers relocated from the United States to China. Many were drawn not only by compensation packages that far exceeded U.S. salaries, but by the sense of participating in a historic national project. China's domestic talent pipeline has expanded just as rapidly. University-level semiconductor engineering programs have grown fourfold since 2019. The Chinese Academy of Sciences launched an initiative aimed at producing 100,000 trained semiconductor engineers by 2030, a figure that would surpass the combined engineering workforce of several global chip leaders. Performance-wise, Huawei's current Ascend 910C 
which entered mass shipment in April 2025, employs a dual chiplet design similar to NVIDIA's architecture, effectively pairing two 910B dies into a single package. Estimates suggest it delivers roughly 780 to 800 teraflops of BF16 performance, compared to the H100's approximately 2,000 teraflops. That places it at about 40% of NVIDIA's raw computing output. The upcoming 910D is designed to narrow that gap further. Huawei claims it can match or exceed the H100 in specific workloads, though independent benchmarks have yet to confirm this. Patent filings indicate a more advanced quad chiplet configuration, using high-speed interconnects and HBM2E memory rather than NVIDIA's newer HBM3. The design reflects a clear attempt to compensate for manufacturing limitations through architectural innovation. Software remains Huawei's biggest obstacle. NVIDIA's dominance is not built on hardware alone. Its CUDA platform has been refined over nearly two decades and has become the standard development environment for AI workloads worldwide. Huawei's MindSpore framework is improving, but it still trails far behind in maturity and adoption. While tools exist to translate CUDA code, performance penalties and compatibility issues remain significant, preserving NVIDIA's system-level advantage. The geopolitical fallout is accelerating. Taiwan has taken the rare step of placing both Huawei and SMIC on a restricted list, requiring special approval for any business engagement. Japan has expanded export controls on dozens of semiconductor manufacturing tools. Meanwhile, SMIC plans to double its 7 nanometer production capacity by 2026, with three new fabrication plants expected to focus heavily on Huawei's AI processors. The reality is that Huawei's Ascend chips are unlikely to dethrone NVIDIA globally in the near future. The performance gap persists, software ecosystems remain unequal, and production costs are exceptionally high. But that misses the broader point. This effort is not about short-term profitability. It is about China constructing a fully independent AI technology stack, regardless of cost. In just two years, progress has been unmistakable. Since the surprise debut of the 7 nanometer Kirin chip in Huawei's Mate 60 Pro, SMIC has dramatically improved yields, scaled production, and shipped hundreds of thousands of AI processors once considered impossible without EUV technology. The deeper story is not whether Huawei can beat Nvidia head to head, but whether the AI world itself is splitting in two. What is emerging is a divided future. One ecosystem led by the West, and another built entirely within China spanning silicon, software, and infrastructure. Every sanction and export restriction accelerates this separation. Even NVIDIA's CEO has acknowledged Huawei as a serious competitor, noting that constraints often force innovation rather than prevent it. The battle over AI chips is no longer approaching. It has already begun. The emergence of the 9 and 10 d makes one thing unmistakably clear. China has no intention of slowing down. The semiconductor sector has just crossed a line many believed was unreachable. Huawei has quietly begun trials of domestically developed extreme ultraviolet lithography technology at its Dingguan site, with ambitions aimed squarely at 3 nanometer chip fabrication. This is not another inflated rumor. Independent confirmations, including validation from the Harbin Institute of Technology, verify that Chinese researchers have successfully generated the precise 13.5 nanometer wavelength essential for EUV processes. At this point, the achievement is factual, not theoretical. One of the most difficult hurdles in EUV development has been overcome, and the global consequences are significant. To understand why this matters, it's important to revisit how we arrived here. In 2019, sweeping U.S. sanctions severed Huawei's access to American semiconductor technologies. At the same time, the Netherlands-based firm ASML, long the sole supplier of EUV lithography machines, was pressured to halt deliveries to China. These machines, each costing well over $300 million, represent decades of refinement and the coordination of tens of thousands of ultra-precise components. Without EUV, manufacturing chips below the 7 nanometer threshold becomes extraordinarily difficult using conventional techniques. Industry consensus at the time suggested China would lag at least a decade behind if it could close the gap at all. As recently as late 2024, ASML's own leadership publicly stated that China remained far from achieving EUV independence. That assessment is now rapidly losing credibility. Rather than replicating ASML's laser-based approach, 
Chinese engineers pursued an alternative path known as laser-induced discharge plasma. Instead of firing high-powered lasers at tin droplets, this method vaporizes tin between electrodes and triggers an intense electrical discharge. The outcome is identical, stable emission of 13.5 nanometer EUV light suitable for advanced chip patterning. This technique has already been demonstrated in laboratory conditions, surprising Western analysts who believed such progress was still years away. Patent filings from 2023 are now translating into physical systems undergoing real-world testing within Huawei's facilities. However, scientific success does not automatically translate into industrial readiness. Producing the correct wavelength is essential, but it represents only one piece of an enormously complex puzzle. A functional EUV lithography machine consists of more than 100,000 highly specialized parts. It requires mirrors with near-perfect reflectivity precision optical assemblies, advanced control software, and a deeply mature supplier ecosystem. ASML and its partners took more than two decades to refine this integration. China has proven it can generate the light source, but it has yet to demonstrate a fully integrated EUV platform capable of sustained, high-volume commercial operation. That reality explains China's current manufacturing strategy. Huawei and its foundry partner SMIC are not yet using domestic EUV tools in production because such systems are not commercially available. Instead, they have relied on an extraordinary workaround. Advanced deep ultraviolet lithography combined with self-aligned quadruple patterning. This method allows them to approach performance levels associated with far more advanced nodes. The release of the Mate 60 Pro in 2023 stunned analysts precisely because it contained a 7 nanometer chip produced under sanctions that were supposed to make such outcomes impossible. Yet this workaround carries a steep penalty. Yield rates for these DUV-based processes remain around 20%, meaning the vast majority of produced chips fail quality standards. In contrast, economically viable chip manufacturing typically requires yields exceeding 70%. At such low efficiency, costs multiply rapidly making large-scale deployment commercially unsustainable. This is why EUV capability is the ultimate objective. Proper EUV manufacturing enables dramatically higher yields from the outset, potentially reaching 80 to 90 percent, instantly restoring economic competitiveness with leading foundries like TSMC and Samsung. China is investing accordingly. Estimates place government-backed funding for indigenous EUV development between 37 and 40 billion dollars. For comparison, ASML's current valuation reflects decades of cumulative innovation. China is attempting to compress that entire developmental arc into a few short years through concentrated state-driven effort. Internal targets suggest experimental production runs by late 2025, with ambitions for broader manufacturing readiness by 2026. These timelines are undeniably aggressive. Even if a working prototype emerges, Scaling to mass production introduces countless challenges, from reliability testing and software stabilization to component sourcing and yield optimization. A more plausible scenario places limited operational capability toward the latter half of the decade, with full commercial maturity arriving in the early 2030s. Still, the precise schedule matters less than the underlying trajectory. China is not merely copying existing solutions. It is pursuing alternative architectures that could eventually prove more efficient and less costly. The strategic implications extend far beyond chip fabrication itself. ASML currently generates more than 40% of its revenue from Chinese clients, making China its most critical market. The company has already warned investors of expected revenue declines as Chinese firms reduce reliance on foreign equipment. Should domestic EUV systems become viable, ASML would not only lose market access, but could eventually face direct competition from lower-cost Chinese alternatives, a dramatic reversal of its long-standing monopoly position. At the same time, Huawei is advancing on multiple parallel fronts. Its Ascend 9110D accelerator reportedly achieves performance comparable to NVIDIA's H100 by combining multiple processors into a single package. While not an elegant design, it is effective. Huawei is also developing its own high-bandwidth memory solutions, reducing dependence on overseas suppliers. Step by step, the company is assembling a vertically integrated semiconductor ecosystem. Although China has not yet reached the absolute technological frontier, the gap continues to shrink at an accelerating pace, 
the original sanction strategy assumed that technological complexity itself would serve as a permanent barrier. That assumption is now under intense pressure. Rather than freezing China's progress, export controls have functioned as a catalyst for rapid internal innovation. Funding that might have been spread across multiple sectors is now overwhelmingly concentrated on semiconductor independence. Thousands of top engineers have been redirected toward lithography, material science, and advanced manufacturing challenges. What was once a commercial objective has become a national priority, comparable to historic strategic programs of the Cold War era. This creates a strategic paradox. Sanctions have succeeded in denying China immediate access to Western tools, but they have also ignited a technology race fueled by unprecedented commitment and resources. At this scale, the relevant question is no longer whether China will achieve advanced semiconductor self-sufficiency, but how long it will take and what global costs will follow. The next year will be critical. If testing at Dingguan demonstrates stable EUV operation, even at limited volumes, it will validate China's entire approach and justify continued massive investment. If persistent technical barriers emerge and schedules slip dramatically, it will signal that the challenge remains steeper than anticipated. Either outcome confirms one reality. The semiconductor industry has entered a new era in which technological dominance is no longer assumed, but actively contested by nations willing to spend whatever is necessary to control their future.